How's it going guys? Are you ready for some exhilarating Pokemon action? Because today we have some outstanding battles lined up that you're sure to enjoy. Get ready to witness a double dose of incinerating battles as we face two gouging fire teams in a row. So sit back, relax and prepare to be dazzled as we use this brilliant team one last time. Trainers, if you enjoy the adrenaline fuel battles and want more heart pounding action, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to join us on our journey to 20k subscribers. Your support means the world to me, so let's keep the excitement going. Anyway, with all that being said, let's jump straight into the first battle. And the first battle is here. We're going against Mamba from the Discord server in the OU tier. And they've brought some power. The Hatterene, the Great Tusk, Walking Weight with the Torkoal, Lilligant Hisui, and a Gouging Fire. So we are in a very bit of a pickle, to be honest with you. But a Hydreigon, if that's not a Walking Weight speed, or, well, if it's not got the sun up anyway, and we can take advantage of that. We have no way of getting rid of the sun, no chilly receptions, no nothing. Cinderace's Pyroball can probably take care of his son a little bit, but um, I think they more than likely lead off with Torkoal. So I'm tempted to just drop a Draco right away, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Just drop a Draco real quick and get rid of the Torkoal. And the battle begins. Good luck. Have fun, Mamba. So they're going to lead off with Blue, the Walking Wig, as we lead off with our Maleficent, the Shiny Hydreigon, nice and shiny. Um, right, okay. So first things first, the plan could still stay ahead. We can go for a Draco Meteor. I doubt they'll risk the walking wake. I think they more than likely switch into Hatterene here. So I'm going to go for a U-turn. They do withdraw. So we've got a bit of momentum going already, which is great. Um, they go into our... <laughs> Rule 34. The Hatterene, nice and shiny. We go for a U-turn, get on out of there. And they're probably red card, right? Yeah, they're red card. Oh, no, the reject button. So does that mean my U-turn doesn't work? I'm trying to remember how this works. I think it does. I think it does mean that. Tony the Sociable, that's got to be Torkoal, right? Yep, shout out to Tony Torkoal. Anyway, nice and shiny. Get the drought up and all that stuff. Uh, we, obviously, our U-turn failed because of the eject pack. Little nifty little mechanic right there. Let's go for another U-turn real quick. Um, they probably figured out we're scarfed already, by the way. We stayed in against the Walking Wake. So we go for a U-turn. They do stay in because they're not worried about Draco. They know we're choice scarfed. And... Um, <laughs> Pretty much got to be choice scarf that way. Otherwise, we would not have stayed in against the walking weight. But now we have a good opportunity. So what we can do here is we can go Mama Swine and go for an Earthquake if we want to. Or we can go Zapdos. I'm leaning more towards Zapdos because um, we can just go straight, straight for a Volt Switch. That's what I'm leaning towards. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. So they go for the Stealth Rocks, which is unfortunate. Stealth Rocks are there. Um, but we can get some damage off on this thing with Volt Switch. And then we'll be in a better position. So... I'm going to go for a Voltage real quick. They more than likely stay in. So they do withdraw. Tony the Torkoal. What are they going to go into to take a potential hit? Uh, blue. That is going to be the Walking Wake, right? Yeah, the Walking Wake comes in. Um, gets the Pro Synthesis in um, speed. So that's unfortunate for my Hydreigon. We go for a Volt Switch. And we're going to bring in something a bit more suited to take on the Walking Wake. Now, the only thing I've really got to tackle Walking Wake in the sun is going to be probably the Aloma Lalola. Or a Sucker Punch from Cinderace, if it, since it's Choice Banded. Because based on that Volt Switch damage, I think Sucker Punch will KO. I go to Sigemai and Terra Dark, but we can't KO them anyway. So I'm leaning more towards... I mean... What can we do? What can we do? I think Cinderace is the way to go. So I am going to bring Cinderace in. Unfortunately, we're going to get some Stealth Rock damage, which is always a shame. They more than likely predict the Sucker Punch here. And... Um, all that, but I think we might be safe to go for it. I think it's the, I, you don't play around with threats. It's a walking weight with a boosted in speed. You don't play around with that. So they do withdraw. Interesting. Are they going to go Great Tusk? More than likely, right? Yeah. And then they go Hatterene. So Hatterene is an interesting one. And um, if we're not choice banded, by the way, which they may, you know, we may not be, um, they more than likely um, switch here, or they go for a Nuzzle. So expecting a Nuzzle, I'm going to go into Zapdos real quick. I think Zapdos is probably the best Pokemon switching because it, it can't get paralyzed by the nuzzle for a start. Um, and it, it puts us in a bit of a better position. So let's see how this plays out. So we're going to Fundage the, the Zapdos. Like so. They go for a nuzzle, which is going to do no damage. We may get no no static, but we may have got static. Um, I think the best thing for me to do here is Heat Wave just to see how much damage it does. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Heat Wave comes through. It's in the sun after all, so we may as well take advantage of it. We get a crit, which is really nice, and they go for a Dazzling Gleam, which is perfect. So um, if they expect us to go for a Volt Switch now, we should go for a Volt Switch anyway. 
Um, just because they more than likely switch the Hatterene out now. So they do withdraw. Are they going to see? I, I think Gouging Fire is the best Pokemon to withdraw into right now, isn't it? Lion Half. That's got to be the Gouging Fire. It is. Cool. So with the Gouging Fire in, it gets that Protosynthesis in its attack, I'm guessing. Speed. Okay. We go for a safe Volt Switch. Good job we did go for Volt Switch. Get a bit of damage off on them, which is always nice. And now I'm wondering, what's the best play to go into? Is Hydreigon the best play? Is Aloma Lalola? I'm going to go into my Hydreigon because I'm pretty confident that Hydreigon Choice Scarf outspeeds Booster Energy Gouging Fire. I'm pretty confident in that, but I'm going to Terra anyway, just in case they go for a Dragon Claw here. I think they stay in though. I really think they stay in. So I'm going to go for the Draco. I don't know why I think they're staying in. I just, it's just a gut feeling. So they do withdraw. Are they going to go into the safe Hatterene switch? I would if I were them. Yeah, they go into the safe Hatterene switch. So that was a, a good plan on my opponent's behalf. They went for the safe play, which was switching this thing in. I do Terra, but it's not necessarily wasted because now we actually have Hydreigon as a switch into Gouging Fire and um, potentially on the Dragon Claw. So it's not the worst Terra in the world to do. I just really thought they would stay in and risk it. I don't know. Anyway, we go for a Draco. Obviously, it doesn't work. Um, we have to switch out now. This thing's going to go... And the Harsh Sunlight fades, which is great. So this thing, I can go into Zapdos real quick because they more than likely go for a, um, a Healing Wish or something like that. So bring Zapdos in. Zapdos isn't too fussed about any of it. So um, let's, let's just see how it plays out with Zapdos. So we're going to Fundarja. They more than likely go for a Psychic, if I had to guess. Psychic comes through. It's going to sting. But it doesn't KO the Zapdos, which is great. So now I'm leaning towards a Hurricane or a Volt Switch. I think I will go with a Volt Switch option. I think. There we go. We take care of the Hatterene with a Volt Switch. So the first KO is here. And it is the Hatterene, which is great. So we're off to a good start. This is looking like it's going to be a, a good battle. It's looking like it's going to be a good battle, I'd say. So let's see how this plays out. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go Cinderace because we can go for a nice and powerful U-turn. What we need to do is get Decidueye in, really. But they have a Gouging Fire. They have a Torkoal. They have a Walking Weight with potentially Flamethrower. And it's just not a good situation for Decidueye to be in to get a Defog off. In comes Tony the Torkoal once again. Nice and shiny. And you're going to get that Sun up. So that's not a bad play by my opponent's behalf. I am tempted to go for a HJK right now. I think I will. I think I will go for a HJK. I think they won't expect that, to be honest with you. I think that's a good play. We go for a HJK, and uh, we get the Libero into a Fighting type. We don't miss, which is nice. And that does a solid 60% to them. They go for a Flamethrower in the Sun. That's going to take out Cinderace. So Cinderace isn't doing too much this game. I could probably use a Sucker Punch for later, but um, I, th I didn't think they'd stay in, to be honest with you. I really didn't think they'd stay in. So let's go into Zapdos now. We've got the Heavy Dew Boost. We don't have to worry about any, like, anything, really. Um, so we'll go into Zapdos like so. And then we'll go for a Roost. And the reason I'm going for a Roost here is because A, they might stay in a uh, fun, uh, Flamethrower. And B, they may go into Great Tusk. And if we go for a Hurricane predicting the Great Tusk, chances are we'll miss. So they do withdraw the Torkoal, which makes sense. They want to keep it around for that Sun. And they're going to go into Rampage, which is going to be the Great Tusk, right? Yeah, the Great Tusk comes in. Gets that Protosynthesis in its uh, speed. Another speed one. And we go for a Roost, which is great. So Roost comes through. Their team is very fast when it comes to the Sun sun Tactics. So, what do we do here? A wise man once told me... Nothing. Wise man never told me anything. So, Ice Spinner could be coming, but I think Zapdos can take one. Because they haven't got a Protosynthesis in attack, but they could be Choice Banded for all we know. Could be Choice Banded. They definitely don't go for close. I think Aloma Mola is the best play, right? We've got Aloma Lola there. We may as well do it. May as well do it. Let's go into Palindrome. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. Pointed Stones do dig in. And they go for an Ice Spinner as expected. So that's great. We made the right play for a change. We're gonna get some Rocky Helmet chip on them, which is great. We don't know what item they are yet. Now we do the Life Orb. So Life Orb... Great Tusk. This thing could still hurt us pretty badly. So I am going to go... For, I'm, I'm going to go for a flip turn expecting the Walking Wake to come in. They do withdraw Rampage. We're going to go for a flip turn expecting them to switch into Walking Wake. There's Blue the Treasure Hunter, which is the Walking Wake. 
We get a nice and powerful flip turn off on it after they get the Pro Synthesis and Speed. And now we've got to decide what to go into. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I don't know what we've got that can take on a Walking Wake. To be honest. If they are Flamethrower, we might be able to take them on. Let's go to Sidueye. Go into Robin Root real quick. And the best bet we've got... And I mean this in all sincerity. I think the best thing we've got to do is go for a Poltergeist. I think that's the only way we can get around this. So I'm going to go for it. This may open up a path for Gouging Fire to come in, but I'm going to go for it anyway. They go for a Flamethrower. It's not Stab, but it is in the sun. And it doesn't take us out, which is amazing. We go for a Poltergeist and miss. Oh, no, we don't. Never mind. They are Mystic War. Interesting. So Poltergeist comes through. Doesn't actually take them out, which is very unfortunate for us. But at the same time, at least we're stalling out another sun turn right now. So now I'll go for a Leaf Blade just in case they miss, which they can't miss because it's Flamethrower. But I don't have a switch into Walking Weight with this team. I got to be honest with you, I, I, I completely forgot about Walking Weight when I was building this team. And when I was testing on Showdown, didn't run into a single Walking Weight. <laughs> so I was like, I just did slip my mind. So unfortunately, Robin Root does go down. We know they're Mystic Water. So we can wall it to an extent, but I think the best thing to go into is Mamoswine right now to go for an Ice Shard. I think that's the best thing we can do. Mamoswine actually goes pretty hard against their team right now as well, um, other than the fact that we're an Ice type and they've got Gouging Fire. But let's go for an Ice Shard anyway. Should KO from here. Ice Shard comes through. Down goes the Walking Wake. So we managed to clear that threat out of the way. Remember when I said we had nothing for Walking Wake? Well, they have no Walking Wake now, so it's not a big deal anymore. In comes Lion Half. So the problem we've got now is this thing could go for a Dragon Dance here. We more than likely switch into a Loma Molola here. So I doubt they'll go for a Flare Blitz because if they go for a Flare Blitz on the Loma Molola, they're going to get Recoil plus Rocky Helmet. They already saw we had Rocky Helmet earlier. So I think the I think the best play we can make is to go a Loma Mo Molola, but. I'm gonna be I'm gonna have to be ballsy. If I want to win this game, I'm gonna have to play some plays. I'm gonna stay in with this mammoth swine and go for an earthquake, and it's gonna all work out great. Watch this. So they're gonna terrestrialize. What type are they terrestrializing into? That's the real question. Is it gonna be like electric or something for the Alomomola? Fire. They terror fire. Are they expecting a Lomomola to come in? No, they go for a heat crash. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. It might not KO, though. It does KO. So, the reason I said... Oh, it was a crit. It might not have mattered, but I, I, the reason I say it doesn't matter is because Heat Crash is based on the weight of your Pokemon compared to the weight of the other Pokemon. Mama Swine's pretty heavy. That's what I'm thinking. Anyway, the sun has worn off. We have to go into Alomolola. I think we can still win this with Hydreigon. It's just going to be tricky. That's all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Zapdos. Zapdos out speed to a base 100 speed. We outspeed this thing. But it all comes down to whether we can hit a Hurricane. And whether the Hurricane KOs. I don't think it does. I'm going to Volt Switch. Just in, I'm just going to Volt Switch into a Loma Lola. Because chances are they switch out, which they have done. Um, and they're going to go into what? Tony. This so right, okay, so Tony the Torkoal comes in. Nicely done by my opponent there. Gets the Drought up, which is unfortunate. We go for a Volt Switch. That's going to definitely do a lot of damage. Actually takes out Tony the Torkoal. So that's unfortunate for my opponent. But now we're in a bit. We're still in a bit of a pickle because the Sun is back up. And they have a Hisuian Lilligant, which probably has Chlorophyll. They also have a Gouging Fire and a Great Tusk. So I think Aloma Mado can wall the Great Tusk and the uh, Gouging Fire pretty well. Especially now the Gouging Fire is pure fire. We can definitely go for something there. I really didn't think they'd go for the Heat Crash on the Mammoth Swine because I thought the Aloma Mola switch was so obvious. Flower Power, that's going to be the Lilligan, right? Yeah, nice and powerful. Nice and shiny. Oh, I like shiny Lilligan. She, it's pretty nice. Um, just because they're going to go for a Victory Dance here, I'm going to go for a Scold. They go for a Solar Blade, which is going to sting a little bit, but I'm confident Aloma Lola can take it. So there we go. Nice and powerful. We can't take it. That's Choice Band. That's got to be Choice Banded. That's got to be Choice Banded. Oh, dear. So, if that's the case, best bet's to drop a Draco. We are Terra Poison. I'm confident they're locked in. 
I'm pretty sure that was choice banded power because a lone molar could definitely take a solar blade from this thing. I'm sure. Let's go for a Drake out. They outspeed us, but I'm pretty I'm pretty confident we can take anything they want to go for. They aren't choice banded, so solar blade just straight up KO'd me. Interesting. Watch us miss this Drake out. Watch us miss. We don't miss. That's great. Thank you for not missing. Down goes the Lilligans. The Lilligans are winning the many games. But we are still in a pickle. And the reason being is that we've got Zapdos left, which gets outspinning KO'd by gouging fire and Great Tusk because of the Ice Spinner. But the time is here. So who wins this game? Everyone, leave in the comment section who you think wins the first game. Do some Fairy Mons and all that. Because my plan right now is to switch out into Zapdos. Sack it off, bring Hydreigon in, and then go for a Draco Meteor to KO this thing. And then um, hopefully Draco Meteor crit on the Gouging Fire. So that was my plan, but it's obviously not going to work out like that. So GG, man, but that was a fun one. Oh, as always, came down to timer. That's always great. Not really. But GG, man, bro. I really appreciate that one. Thank you for your time. It was a nice 2 2. Um, not a draw. You won because you had more health, but. Um, yeah, interested to see what people think. And the second battle is here. We're going against Tyler, also known as Lazy Boy, from the Discord server in the OU tier. Looking at the team, I am Boulder, Petcherunt. They've got Keldeo, Tinkton, Mandibuzz, and Gouging Fire. Pretty powerful stuff. I think Hydreigon can put some work in against the Petcherunt. Um, and also outspeeding the, the Boulder and the Gouging Fire. We need to get rid of that Tinkerton for that. And I think Cinderace is the key to that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assume... Let's just look at the team. They've got no sun, which is great, but they probably have Protosynthesis Booster Energy. I think they lead off with Tinkerton to get the Stealth Rocks up, or they counteract our Cinderace lead by leading with the Iron Boulder. But it's fine if they do that, because we can just go ahead and go into the Aeroma Mola straight away and take any hit the Iron Boulder wants to throw at us, pretty much. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Lazy Boys. So they lead off with Bonehead. The Mandibuzz as we lead off with our Cinderace. Nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. So, let us go straight for a U-turn. It's going to be stabbed from the Libero. It should do a decent bit of damage to the Mandibuzz. And I think they more than likely switch out into the Gouging Fire, to be honest with you. Or the Petron. They stay in, which is actually really good for us. As it means we're going to get some damage off on the Mandibuzz. Some nice damage. And then all we have to do is go into Zapdos. Because the worst they're going to do to us... Is go for a knockoff. And that's the only Pokemon that I don't mind being knocked off, really. So we'll go Zapdos real quick. Like so. Fundaja comes in. And they have no ground type. So we can freely go for a Volt Switch right now. They go for the knockoff. It's going to sting a little bit. We may get static. But it looks like we haven't. Um, we can go for a Volt Switch now. And that'll definitely do a lot of damage to the Mandibles. May even KO it. So we go for a Volt Switch. They actually stay in. And they nearly lose their Mandibles. But they probably go for a U-turn of their own. Or a Roost here. So I'm going to use that as an opportunity to get something else in. And um, based on the Volt Switch damage, it's safe to assume that Mamoswine's Icicle Spear can probably KO this thing. So, um, I mean, not, but based on the U-turn damage from Cinderace, Icicle Spear can probably KO this thing. So they go for a Roost, which is absolutely fair. Fair and powerful and all that stuff. So now, they probably expect an Icicle Spear or an Icicle Crash. In which case, they may go Petrarunt, they may also go Tinkerton. I'm leaning towards Stealth Rocks or Earthquake right now. I'm going to risk the Earthquake. I don't think they stay in. They definitely don't stay in, right? They withdraw. Great. Are they going to go Tinkerton? Hopefully they do. Anything's good at this point. Earthquake hits everything really hard. So Tammy comes in. The Tinkerton. We make the right prediction here. What a play by me not to toot my own horn or anything. But we go for the EQ. And we cleanly take out that Tinkerton. Pretty good stuff if I do say so myself. I'm really humble, aren't I? So humble. <laughs> Terrakion.io, that's a really good nickname for an Iron Boulder. <laughs> Comes on in. It's going to get that boost energy. It's going to boost his attack or speed? Speed. That's actually better because it means we're going to take that hit a little bit harder with our, a little bit less with the Aloma Mola. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Aloma Mola comes through and they probably go for a close combat. So we're going to withdraw our Mamoswine and we're going to go into our Aloma Mola. See, if I say it slowly, I can say it. Allo Mamola. Getting better. They go for a Swords Dance. Ah, that's terrifying. Okay, so. Ha. Huh. Terrifying stuff. Let's go for a Scold real quick. So they go for a Mighty Cleave. It's going to sting. Doesn't KO there. We get the Rocky Helmet chip. And now we're able to go for a Scold. And hopefully get a burn. That'd be nice. 
because it's Terrakion. No, we don't. I can't protect because I might cleave hits through protect. My best bet is to switch out and sack something off at this point. So looking at the team, I'd say the best thing to sack off is probably going to be Zapdos. So I'm going to go for the Zapdos switch. And Zapdos also has a chance of paralyzing this thing, which would be amazing if we could get that off. Um, so let's go into Fundaja, like so. Sack it off to a Mighty Cleave, which is coming. They go for an EQ. They expect us to switch into something else. They must have done. They can still go for a Mighty Cleave this turn, so there's no point in, you know, doing anything about it. They may even go for a close combat expecting a Terra Steel. They go for a Psycho Cut, which definitely takes us out, and I don't think it makes contact. So obviously that's not going to static it, but it's fine. We can do this, no problem. Let's go into a Loma Mola once again. Now that we have a bit more health back, thanks to our Regenerator ability. Regenerator being a prime example of why switching is such an integral part of the game, by the way. So any anti-switches out there, they literally make mechanic for this game based around switching. So shut your face. Let's go for a Scald once again. They go for Mighty Cleave. We should be able to take this one unless it's a crit, but it is not. Rocky Helmet comes through. Scold comes through. And we don't get the burn, I don't think. We did get the burn. Ooh. That burn's clutch. That is clutch AF. So, knowing they might... Uh, they might not even go for a Mighty Cleave to KO us because of the uh, Rocky Helmet. They may go for a Psycho Cut. So even though Mighty Cleave can cut through Protect, I'm still going to go for it just in case they don't go for Mighty Cleave. This is the only way I can keep my Loma Mola alive, really. As they go for a Mighty Cleave, they're still going to break right through that Protect. But Rocky Helmet is going to take them out as well. So Panic Averted, we did lose a Loma Mola, which was one of our main stops to Keldeo. Not that we could touch Keldeo in return, but now if the Gouging Fire gets a Dragon Dance up, we're pretty much boned. So let's see what we can do here. I'm leaning towards the Hydreigon switch. I think I will go Hydreigon. So they're going to go into Bonehead, which is the Mandibuzz. As we go into our Hydreigon real quick. So Hydreigon's in a good position, in a way. We definitely want to keep the Choice Scarf intact. And they probably go for a knockoff here. So I'm going to go for a U-turn first and foremost. So we go for a U-turn. And this, this is the only way I can think to keep all my items intact. And that is to go into something that I don't mind being knocked off. Because they're going to go for a knockoff, right? I... Don't want Mama Swine getting knocked off because the Icicle Spear will come in clutch. Uh, well, mainly against um, the Mandibles, actually. So we could go Ma uh, Mama Swine. But I'm looking at the team and Decidueye is not doing much other than the Keldeo. Decidueye actually walls Keldeo to Oblivion, so we might want to keep that around. Um, I think Mama Swine is probably the best option. I know we'll lose our load of dice, but it is what it is. They may even go for a Roost, to be fair, expecting a Draco Meteor. They do go for a knockoff, knocking off our load of dice, but... I'm pretty confident it'll still do... I'm, 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 I'm hopeful that we'll still hit enough times to KO this mana, but I think I only need three times. Ice Skull Spear comes through. Yeah, only three times is all we need. Please don't hit twice. That'd be annoying. Oh, we hit twice. We hit twice. They go for a Roost. So, Roosting back up. Mandibuzz is a pain. We still have a chance. A small chance. That we can get hit. We can hit this thing four times. Four times all we need at this point. Yeah, four times will do it. Three. Damn. We hit three times. They go for a defog. Oh, wow. Okay. Why? Are they exp I don't know what just happened there. But I'm going to go for an ice shard now. Just to make sure I take this thing out. There we go. So the Mandibuzz goes down. I'm not sure why they defogged. Maybe they thought Hazards were there and they were like, Mandibuzz last ditch effort. Maybe they also wanted to get our evasiveness lowered. Maybe they've got a move that hits better with the lower evasiveness. I don't know. Romeo comes in. Romeo, Romeo, the Keldeo. So we could still use Mamo. I'm going to bring Decidueye straight in. It's specially defensive. We're immune to its one of its stabs. We're resistant to the other stab. And Icy Wind won't do too much damage to us, even if it's choice specs. So we'll withdraw our Mama Swine like so. We'll go into the Decidueye real quick, which is always a good switch into Keldeo. There we go. They go for a Hydro Pump and they miss. Ooh, that's unlucky. But at the same time, it wouldn't have done much anyway. So let's go for a... Um, I think Poltergeist is better because they may go Petrarunt. So I think Poltergeist is better here. They do withdraw. Are they going to go Petrarunt or are they going to go Gouging Fire? Goober. That's going to be the Petrarunt, right? 
It is. Caught in a Master Ball. Nicely done. We go for a Poltergeist. And then we're going to attack them with their Rocky Helmet. We've got the Long Reach ability, so we're not going to get any Rocky Helmet chip damage on us anyway. So now we've got a couple of options. What are those options? Poltergeist again. Yay! Let's go for it. Things are getting spooky up in here as we're about to go for a Poltergeist. But they do go for that Malignant Chain. And does it poison us? No, it does not. As we go for another Poltergeist. Attacking them with their Rocky Helmets. And nearly down they go. Nearly. Now, Petrarunk can have Recover. Very much a possibility they go for a Recover. So let us go for a Poltergeist once again. Just to make sure we're getting the maximum amount of damage off on them. There's the Recover. Are they recovering more than we can damage? I want to say they are. About the same, really. So let's go for another Poltergeist. Tag me with a Rocky Helmet. It may KO this time. It does. Petra Run goes down, which is great. Absolutely great. So with the Petra Run out of the way, they've got Keldeo and Gouging Fire. And we know which one's coming in right now, don't we? We know which one's coming in. Enceratops. That's a really cool nickname for a Gouging Fire. That's really cool. Um, they probably go for a Dragon Dance here. They definitely don't go for a Dragon Claw. So we go into our Hydreigon real quick, who can probably help handle this pretty well, I think. So we're going to withdraw our Decidueye. And we're going to go into our Hydreigon, hoping and praying they don't go for a Dragon Claw predicting this. But they more than likely go for a Dragon Dance. They go for an Outrage. <sighs> Bye, Hydreigon. Nice knowing you. So that's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate, that is. Knowing they've gone for an Outrage, though. We can probably live a hit with Decidueye unless they're banded. I think the way we win this is with Ma is we need to weaken this thing first with Mamoswine. So I'm going to go Mamoswine and go for an Ice Shard. Definitely going to go for an Ice Shard. Just to get as much damage off on it as possible, really. So Ice Shard comes through. Bit of chip damage, not too bad. They go for an Outrage. We may live. Probably don't. No, we don't. <laughs> as down goes Mamoswine, which is fantastic. So... They're still locked in. Our best bet right now is going to be Cinderace's high jump kick. It's going to be Cinderace's high jump kick. They're still locked in. We're going to get the Libero. We're choice banded. Let's hope we don't miss real quick. Libero comes through. We don't miss, which is nice. We're choice banded. We barely miss the KO as Outrage is going to take us out. So that is really unfortunate. They managed to pull that back. I should have just... I should have sacked something off or something. Really should have sacked something off there. Let's go into Decidueye. Decidueye could still pull us back. Decidueye could still pull back. Especially if they stay in here. If they stay in, we're actually alright. So let's go for a Leaf Blade. Leaf Blade or KO. Confusion. Please hurt yourself for Confusion. That's all I'm asking for. They don't. They end up going for an Outrage. Can we live? We can't. Definitely got to be banded or something that has. But Gouging Fire came through for my opponent there. Really a shame that we couldn't get Cinderace to do more. But it is what it is. GG Tyler, Lazy Boy. That was pretty fun. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Let me know how it does if you do try it out. I'm really curious to see how it, it does. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.